And we're live. <laughs> Good morning. We are back again. It's So Together Tuesday. And we, uh, we looks like you just stole my, my needle there. Look at that. It attached <laughs> itself to the camera. That's so funny. Like I was like, wait, there's a needle hanging from the camera now. Um, anyway, here it is. Great. Now it's ready. So if you've watched Sew Together Tuesday before, you know I like to lose my needles when I'm sewing. So we're going to try not to lose this today. Okay. Let's take it right back in the pin cushion. <laughs> Welcome to Sew Together Tuesday. I am Teresa Coates. We are back again. Today we are doing a really fun project that I am super excited about. And I think it is perfect timing for this project because there is so much snow on the east coast right now it's crazy i was talking with a friend of mine on instagram this morning and she was like 30 inches of snow there it's nuts so if you are in that snowy area you are particularly going to love this project um it's a good one it's one that'll keep you super warm and uh very versatile. So today we're making the soft and cozy cuddle sack is what we're calling it. And it's a cute little pattern designed by our um, brand ambassador, Linda White. So she came up with this idea and we are super grateful for it because it's really, it's a wonderful little project and super duper easy. So if you're new to sewing with cuddle, this is a great project to start with. So we're gonna learn some of the basics about sewing with cuddle. It's not hard. You could make it more um, complicated if you wanted to by adding some different, you know, you could do some patchwork or embroidery, all sorts of fun stuff if you want to. But really like the, the thing about this that makes it so great is that it's really just quick and easy. So the pattern is available on our website. So on the um, blog, so if you go there, the link is in the description. You can go to the blog and download the pattern. The pattern looks like this, okay? So here's, here's what it looks like when you print it out from the download, all right? The cool thing about it is that she made it, or if I can find the right side, there we go, in all of these different sizes. So this is all on the pattern that you can get, and you can make it in these different sizes. So the petite one is, I would say, like a child size. It's the one I made. I'm going to show you that. Um, and then they get longer. So the finished lengths are here, so you can see what size you might want. And then the amount of fabric that you need is up here. So it's a super versatile pattern. Um, really great for all different people in your family, different sizes. So little kids, you got extra talls in your family. I'm from one of those um, families where there are um, four out of five people in the family that like are, you know, related are over six feet tall. I'm I'm the little one here. So um, <laughs> we have a very tall family. So we would make all the extra talls. I'm going to make the medium because I'm the petite one in my family. So <laughs> we're going to do that. We're going to make the medium size, which I would just say is just a regular average size. It's a yard and a half of fabric. So the one that I made, like I said before, is the petite, it's the petite is what it says, the small size here. So I'm just going to hold it up so you can see it. Okay. So this is a great size for little kids and it's got the marlin fabric inside so this is open wide cuddle on the outside and lux cuddle galaxy marlin on the inside which is just a gorgeous blue and i love the way that it's all these different colors of blue so really what you can you could use this for lots of different things it doesn't have to be an exact match it's kind of my favorite thing about galaxy actually is because it's all these like variances of a pretty color it doesn't have to be a perfect match for it to work so this is uh it ends up being a little bit less than a yard um long tall whatever you want to describe that as so for a little kid this would be great we're gonna do a bigger one. But this this is a fun fabric. I wanted to show you another couple fabric combinations because it really is just incredibly versatile. So whatever, whoever you're making it for, just make it to fit them. The outside we're doing in a print cuddle. So, and we have tons of print cuddles. You could do both in Lux, but I love the idea of doing print and a Lux cuddle. So this is another um, combo that I put together that I think is super pretty. So this is the, uh, it's a digital print. This is our spring flowers, which I think is absolutely gorgeous. And then it goes with the Lux Cuddle Glacier in wood rose. So any of the wood rose fabrics that we have, this would be a great combo to put together. I mean, isn't that beautiful? So, so pretty. I think it's just, yeah, it's one I kind of, I, I kind of wish I had more fabric, but I hadn't bought enough. So I might have to buy more because um, now I kind of want this one too. I love this wood rose color. Honestly, it's one of my favorites. Okay, so I'm gonna put this over here, get it out of my way. All right, and then the one that we did today, the one that we're gonna use is with a new Valentine theme 
Valentine themed uh, print that is called Love Monkey. We have a few different uh, Valentine prints that are available. And since it's, you know, the month of Valentine's, I figured we should do it. So that's what this one is. Okay. So this is the little sock monkey guy that everybody's probably familiar with. Super cute. And he's got little Valentines and flowers. Okay. Little heart full of candy right there, I'm sure. So we're doing this one. And then I combined that with the Lux Cuddle Ridge. And this is in Cardinal. So I love this fabric. I just think it's super interesting. It's just got this really cool texture to it. So it's a completely different thing than the other one. Uh, the ridge is also what the little shark on the pattern is made out of. And it's what my little hedgehog, there he is. My little hedgehog is made out of Ridge. So Ridge is super fun and versatile and it comes in lots of different colors. So uh, check that one out because I think it's one that uh, we don't see a whole lot and it's really cool. I like Ridge a lot. So we're gonna do those two today. So the Love Monkey and the Ridge, but you can choose any combination of fabrics. So for this one, the things that we're going to need for this project are a yard and a half of Lux Cuddle and a yard and a half of a Cuddle print. So like I said, you could do it with uh, cuddle, uh, Lux Cuddle on both sides, but I really love the print and the Lux Cuddle. I think it's just a great way to personalize it for sure. So you're also going to want a 45 millimeter rotary cutter or the blade that I like so much, which is the Ulfa SAC-1. You're gonna want a self-healing cutting mat, of course, if you're gonna be cutting things out. Micro serrated scissors, and today is, I'm using mine from Femore. You'll want 9014 stretch needle, as always, because we're working with a knit fabric, and so it's very important to use the correct needle. We'll use a polyester thread, which will give it a little bit more stretch and give the seams a little more strength than it would if it were uh, another kind of thread, a cotton thread. You'll also wanna have a felt tip marker. I'm just gonna be using a Sharpie today. Any sort of um, pen to make to mark on your fabric will be great. Flower head pins, of course. Uh, we use the ones from Clover because I love them a lot and they're super strong. What well, need that hand sewing needle that hopefully we didn't lose yet and a stiletto and pressing tool, my favorite from by Annie. So we're gonna use all of those today and I think that's it. I think we can get started. If there's any questions, oh, I need to tell you guys to share the video. Uh, I get so excited about things. I sort of forget the uh, the basics. So please share this video. Tell your friends all about it. We're very excited to do these little sewing classes every week. I'm super excited to share um, my knowledge and experience and all of that good stuff with you guys. So please tell your sewing friends all of that good stuff. And we will enter you to win a cuddle quilt kit at the end of the show. So at the end, we will... Um, we will choose a winner and then we will send you a quilt kit. So pretty exciting. And then you get to work with Cuddle on your own. So uh, make sure to share your share it with your friends. And then also, if you want, have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments and we will get to them. I will answer them or one of our um, our people will answer them for you. So um, please, if you have any comments at all or questions at all, please, please, please leave them. I am very happy to answer them as we go. Sometimes I forget to tell you things. So know. All right. I think we are good. All right. So let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do, basically we just cut out the fabric. So I did it one and a half yards each. And so I carefully measured those. I did that beforehand because it takes up my entire table. So this guy has to move on to the floor and I just figured I would do it before you guys got here. So I've got myself halfway, halfway figured out already. So it's a yard and a half is what I cut. I cut a straight end on both of them, and then I laid them out together and cut them at the same length. So I cut one and then I cut the other so they'd be the same length. Okay, that was important. The other thing is that Cuddle and Lux Cuddle can be different widths because our fabrics are 58 to 60 inches wide. So there's a couple of ways that you can deal with this. You can either uh, trim the one so that they are both the same size or you can take an extra seam allowance. So generally speaking, the print tends to be a little bit wider than the Lux. This doesn't always hold true, but it often is that the print will be slightly wider. Mine it was, and I ended up trimming off about a half an inch because it was on the cuddle, um, just the regular cuddle and not the Lux cuddle. So trimming that was no big deal. And I wanted it to be nice and straight, so I did. If you don't wanna trim it, or if, say if the Lux is too wide and you want you don't wanna to have to cut that if you don't have to, then you could just take a bigger seam allowance on the one, okay? So you just want them to be basically about the same, same width. All right, so let me get this stuff. Okay, hold on. I move some things, get things out of my way. Get that over there. All right, 
So now I'm going to put this aside. The inside, so it's a little bit different because a lot of times like the outside is the Lux Cuddle and the inside is the print because like that's the way we've done it, like the self-binding blanket and stuff. With this one, the Lux Cuddle goes inside. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that first and I'm going to sew that together and we're just trying to sew it into basically a bag shape. There's a couple of little things along here that will make it work a little bit easier and we'll talk about that as we go. Okay, so I'm going to um, fold this so it's uh, move my little mouse. Hold on. Um, it is right sides out right now, and I want it to be right sides together. There is a nap to this, so I want to make sure that when I'm petting it, that I'm going to slide in to the bag, that the top will be up here and it will slide this way. Okay, you can uh, on certain ones you won't be able to tell really. The marble is one of them, galaxy, you can't really tell. Okay. And I'm just going to fold this with my selvages together. So this is totally just the width of the fabric. We're not trimming anything unless you really want to make them exactly the same size. Okay. So we have talked about pinning and we're going to double pin this. So when we're pinning, I want to put the two rows. If I'm pinning this way, and this is just a little side note, I want to pin the direction I'm going to sew. So when I sew, I'm going to sew from here down this side, right? When it goes into my machine so that this can all be outside of the machine and this goes underneath the foot. What happens is if I pin it like this, I need to put my pin so that they go toward the end. So and then I have to pin this, this funky way where I'm kind of like having to move my hole. So if you back up, Puck, then you can see. What the problem is is that I can't just pin it easily. I have to do this whole like turn and like get this in here like this, this is ridiculous and it's not comfortable. So what I suggest for if you are left-handed, keep it closer to you and pin here. Cause see my left hand will just do that really easily. I am not left-handed or ambidextrous. I am very right-handed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it so that it is further away from me. Those selvages are together. And now when I pin it, I can pin it this direction and it's super easy. Okay, so if you are new to set, sewing cuddle, you're going to want to pin fairly close and you're definitely going to want to do the double pinning. Okay, so we're going to pin it along the one side and then we'll come back and we'll pin along here in between so it creates sort of a, a zigzag. All right, so that's the way we want to pin that. I'm going to pin just the first little bit that way and then I'm going to show you how to do it with the wonder clips. Okay, so if you're new to sewing cuddle, this is the best way to do it. If you have sewn with cuddle a little bit and you're pretty comfortable with it, you know that the lengthwise grain does not really have stretch. Okay, so I can pull it this way and it's not really going to stretch, which means it's not going to work this way very far. This side definitely has some stretch. That's my width wise. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to take some little wonder clips and I'm just going to clip every couple of inches here. And then I'm still going to go back and do my double pinning. So I'm still going to go back and add that second row because what that second row does is holds the fabric nice and stable as I'm working my way down. So I'm going to be sewing on this side of the pin, which means that it can't, this area of the fabric can't really move while I'm sewing. Okay. And that's really important. This, that's what this double pinning does is holds it so it's nice and stable. And I'm just going to pin and clip this whole way down the side. And I'm just making sure that my selvages match. I don't really care if the rest of it is all um, piled up on the table. It's absolutely fine. I'm just going to clip the edge. Okay. And then I'll go back and pin in between so that this will stay where I want it to, because you can see this area here, it has tons of movement. Once I put a pin in here, it doesn't. So I stick the pin in there so that I can't lose control of that little area. All right, now, oh, look at this. I ended up being it with it off. Was that me? Did I pin it wrong? I don't know. <laughs> Remember when I measured it really carefully before you guys got here? Now I'm like, oh, darn it. I have to cut it again. Okay, this is what happens. That's totally what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, <laughs> I really did measure it, you guys. Um, I'm going to clip it, sew it, and then I'm going to trim off the bottom because that's what I, I like to do it. 
And it's easier for me if I, and I do this a lot with blankets and stuff because sometimes it's hard. I don't have a huge area that I could lay it out on. So one of the things that happens is they'll get off a little bit. I will always trim it after. So I will sew it and then trim it because when I have tried to like fix it now, then what happens is it moves more and then I'm in more trouble. So we're just gonna sew it and then see what happens, okay? So uh, come on over. We're just gonna sew down this whole side and we're gonna sew this with a half inch seam allowance, okay? So I'm gonna get this on the right stitch, get it on my straight stitch, and I'm gonna up it to a three and a half stitch length so that it will just sort of sail right through here. Okay. Let me get my edges to match. And then I'm just going to sew. So I'm just going to do a little straight stitch here all the way down the side. So you can see that the, the pins will hold it nice and sort of firm for me. The Wonder Clips will be a little bit uh, looser. And that's totally fine because this isn't really going to stretch as I work my way through. I'm going to leave this second set of pins in. And I'm just going to kind of make sure as I'm going that I can feel that it hasn't gotten bent up underneath there. Because sometimes that will happen. You'll get some folds. So we're going to try real carefully not to get any extra bits of fabric in there. Okay. The thing about keeping the pins in the back. So I always want to keep these in as I sew, but I kind of take them out along the way because they will, they will stab you. Just don't take them out until they get past the foot. All right. Kind of get these to come along. And so all the way down. And we're going to do this on both. The other one I already did. So it's already taken care of. pins out. Oops, sorry. All right. So all the way down. Okay. Let's see how far it's off still when we get down there. Just my luck it will totally have straightened up. That'll be great, right? <laughs> yeah, finger straps for you. <laughs> <laughs> Not holding my breath. Not holding my breath either. See, this is the thing. It's just, it's totally more of a bowl. Whatever. It happens with the Lux rows when we do that in classes. Sometimes people are like, my ends didn't match. I'm like, just chop it off. It's fine. So that's what we'll do today. I'll show you how it works. Okay. Oh, pin got crooked there. All right. So I'm going to stick one more little pin down here because these like to separate at the end. And I don't want that to happen. I want to get all the way to the end. I'm going to come along here. I'm going to back stitch, catch that real good, and cut my thread. All right. So at this point, I can take this out. I'll get rid of the rest of my pins. So this was my bottom where it was slightly crooked. <laughs> slightly as in you know an inch off so what I want to do sorry this is a weird view you guys but I need to get this so that it will lay flat so that I can cut this evenly okay so hold on Huck I need to I need to shove stuff on the floor and I can't okay so the thing is that I need to get it as much on the table as I can so I can get this straight looks like I cut one layer straight and one not so straight Okay, so I'm going to move this, and I have to get this all onto the table so that I can cut it and have it be all flat, because that's the problem is it, when it starts coming off the table, it weighs down, and that's probably what happened is that one side got a little longer than the other. Okay, so I'm going to use my little ruler here, make sure it's fairly even. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Because this one, what I what I can see, I don't know if you guys can see the numbers on here. I can line up my the number on the fold, okay? So I can get this on the fold, and then it's pretty straight down the side here, okay, down this front. So my one piece just moved on me when I was doing the cutting yesterday, which does not shock me at all. <laughs> okay, keep my fingers out of the way there. All right, so now I'll move down here and I will continue to cut that. And this is my bottom. Okay. 
How do you know that? Uh, because I knew that the bottom was too big when I got down there. I just remembered that when I had pinned it together, I started at the top, I got down to the bottom, and it was too much. Okay, so now we have a little bit of a mess because I just wanted to whack it off with a rotary cutter. So, pardon me, I'm going to vacuum real quick. <laughs> better okay so that's the easy way to take care of that mess all right so at this point we have two different uh choices of how we put this together so for me i put the side seams on the side uh linda when she does it she puts the side the seams in the middle in the center so what we're going to do here is i'm going to mark this with my sharpie and then I'm also going to stick a pin in it just in case so that I can try to get that to match up a little bit easier than trying to find the mark. If I pin it, you can see I like kind of weave it in there and out so it doesn't fall out quite as easily. Then I can take this and match it with the seam allowance, okay? So this is one way of doing it so that the seam comes up the middle. And that will give your seam, make your seam allowances flat here. I'm just going to do it up the side because that's the way I did them. Um, and I like it that way. So I'm going to put my pin here. This is going to be my mark for when I put them together. So I'm going to lose this pin later, but I marked it really well with the Sharpie. We'll use, we'll put the pin in again um, in a bit. Okay. So now I need to sew the bottom seam. So I'm going to sew it with the sides, with the seam on the side instead of in the middle. I'm going to sew it over here and I'm going to just pin these together. Because this is a widthwise stretch, so now we're sewing across the width of the fabric and it's going to get stretchy. Now I'm going to double pin it. Okay, so I'm going to double pin the entire thing and not use the wonder clips. So the wonder clips I just find don't hold it quite as tight as I want to when there is stretch involved. All right. Okay, I can get my pins, hold on, there we go. All right, and then I'm just gonna pin it all the way across, keep it nice and flat. And I kind of like to pin it a little further apart and then come back through just in case, because this one I know it has to match, it's, you know, it's just in half. Couldn't have trimmed the side wrong. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna twist that. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do that second row of pins over here. So if this feels too wide for you and you're having a little trouble, you can just put another pin in here and just make these all closer. Okay, as you get comfortable with the fabric, you don't have to pin quite as much, but that double pinning, I still use it all the time. It makes a huge difference in how much your fabric moves on you. Okay, so now with this one, the side seam, we did a half inch seam allowance, which is pretty standard for a lot of cuddle things. We do a half inch seam allowance on most things. With this one, we're actually gonna do an inch seam allowance on the bottom, and that gives us a little bit of, um, a little bit of extra when we're gonna do a special thing to hold it all together in a bit. Um, so we're gonna do an inch. So what I can do is I can measure that on my machine. You can find that spot on your machine and keep it there. I actually, I'm gonna show you a little trick of how I measure them. All right, you wanna come back over? Okay, I'm going to find my comments over here. Let's see, there we go. All right, so now what I do to measure mine is I have this little ruler that I have that it's an inch wide. So I measured that. So I'm going to stick my needle down. And then what I can do is bump this up and I can see the line on my machine up there about where it needs to be. So then I'm going to take these cute little post-its okay, peel the back of them off and I'm going to stick it right over there. Okay. So watch out, Hawk, I'm coming in. Okay. So now going to put that there. So this edge is now my inch away. Okay. So totally temporary. It's just going to sit there for this stitching and then I can take it off and it's not going to leave a mark or anything like that. All right. So now I can stick this underneath the foot. 
get that underneath all the way. So we always want to start in just a little bit, then backstitch and then go forward. Uh, that helps in a lot of different ways, but especially with the cuddle because it's so thick. So I'm still going to do a straight stitch here. Using the polyester thread makes that so that it's going to be nice and strong. Take my pins out. Make sure I don't sew over any of these guys. Okay, so this little, the little post-it thing is actually super duper uh, easy to do for any sort of like wider seam allowance because it's so temporary. And for me, it's hard. Once I get over there, like, I'm like, am I four or five lines away from the foot? Like, I can't remember. So this is my way of temporarily marking that seam allowance. We're going to go back and be able to cross over the seam that we sewed before. Okay, so now at this point, I've got my side sewn and my bottom sewn, and I did that on both of them. So I want to make sure that all my pins are out, because that <laughs> is not a fun discovery to make when you slide your feet in. Uh, <laughs> you're going you're gonna to want to make sure that all of your pins are out. Okay, get my pins put back here. I'm going to take my little post-it thing off because I don't want to get confused later and think that that's actually where I'm going to sew because it isn't. It's where I'm going to take notes later. All right, so now I've got my pieces. So if you are uh, worried about the bulk at the corners, which I know some people want to trim them when we do the Lux throw as well because you have the same issue, you could just trim those off. So I'm going to do that on here. I'm just going to trim... Okay, just so there's a little bit less bulk there. You could do it on both. I'm totally just gonna let it um, be on this side, but take just a little bit off of here. All right, so now we need to put the two pieces together. That's it, okay? See how easy this is? So now I've got this piece. So basically I've got two sacks made out of cuddle. So I've got my Love Monkey one, which is this one, and this one. So one of them needs to go inside out. I'm gonna turn this one turn this uh, so that it is right side out now. Yes. Like thought for a second. Wait, is that what I'm supposed to do? Oh, you know what I didn't do? You guys, I totally did the thing where you almost sew your bag shut. Are you ready? We can go back and fix this. So I would have fixed this in a different way, except I actually want to show you how the pattern is done. <laughs> See, somebody said last week, it wouldn't be a Sew Together Tuesday without an oopsie. Here it is. Here's another one. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's true these things happen because you can truthfully like we can leave our gap wherever we wanted to do so we can leave it around the top or we can leave it on the side I want to leave it on the side and I'm going to leave it on the inside of it so that we can turn it inside out all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back I'm going to leave a gap and we want to leave a good size gap I think it says in the pattern a 10 inch gap that feels a little bit extra long for me so I'm going to leave a little bit smaller one. If you have trouble turning it out, you can definitely leave a larger one. So what I want to do is make myself a gap. So I'm going to do the little thing where I do the L's, okay? This is what happens when I make the pattern. Like, I do the sample a week before. I forget. I have to do it the night before, you guys. I have to be all stressed out and try it again the night before. <laughs> That's what I realized. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew. <laughs> Hog's like, no, we don't want that at all. Um, what I'm going to do is sew the little L bracket. So if you haven't seen me do this before, I wish that the thread were a little bit easier to see on this fabric, but it's kind of hard. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, sew down the seam that I already sewed on before, which is that my half inch seam allowance. I'm just going to do a little stitch. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I caught it. And now I'm gonna turn this and sew off the edge. So again, you would do this as you were sewing your side seam or do it after like I did, you know? <laughs> it's just not the easiest way. Okay. So again, I wanna make sure that it's nice and flat. I'm gonna put it on there. And then I'm going to stitch down 
that side seam where I sewed before. Make sure that's all caught. Okay. So now we get to do that thing. This is actually one of those moments that as much as I'm like, ah, I don't like messing up things, it actually gets to show you how I fix things. Um, so people always talk about how they don't want to take out the stitches and cuddle. Because one, you can see here, like they're really, really hard to see in there. And try the idea of using a regular seam ripper and trying to get under this is horrible. So I use my favorite alpha tool. Okay. So what I do is I come in here and I just kind of get it in between until I can feel it start popping. Okay. And then I just kind of move my little blade till it cuts the thread. Okay. And then all of a sudden the seam is open. So this works really well on Lux Cuddle because Lux Cuddle has all of that extra fiber. So you can see super duper simple fix. Okay. This is what I use is I just go down that seam and just cut the thread. I'm not super careful about it and it works out just fine. All right. So now, you know, it's not that hard. All right, so now, well, where were we? Where were we? <laughs> we have two cuddle sacks. We have to sew them together. So glad I remembered that now, like where it's actually easy to go back and fix it. Um, yeah, I've definitely done the whole way before. Okay, so now we're going to stick these things right sides together. And I'm just going to kind of shove this in a little bit. Not going to be super careful because it's going to come in and out a couple of times here. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to make sure that my... Here's my seam, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to sort of just lay this together until I get to the other side, and I find my fold line. Okay, as soon as I come over here. And notice you kind of scooted down along it in segments as opposed to like measuring it all at once. Right, it's because I don't want to stretch it, so I was trying to like carefully, yeah hold it together as I move so I don't accidentally stretch it in ways that I don't want to. So I'm going to match up this fold line with my seam. Okay, so these two are gonna go together. And I'm gonna pin it along here. Then I'm gonna work my way back over here. And you remember I marked this, if I can find the marking on it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I did a panic. Did, did you I think you sewed the top shut? No, I think that I, I thought I just had it on the wrong end. And I was right. like, wait, no, I sewed. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. She's losing her mind. Okay. I didn't mark it on this way. That's why I was like, wait, I didn't do the mark, but I did. It's on the other end. Okay. So this one, we're doing the same thing. Go all the way across. Okay. Now I'm going to stick a pin in here. So that's why we only marked it on the bottom where that fold was. Okay, so this one goes to this seam. Okay, so these are opposite. So this is a little bit like when we do the infinity scarf and people are like, wait, my seams aren't matching. Your seams aren't gonna match and that's what we want. So this gives less bulk on the sides and then the seams are just on the side, which um, will work out just fine, but you want the seam to match the fold. Okay, so whether you do it with your seams down the front and back center, or you do them on the sides, you want the fold and a seam allowance to go together, and a fold and a seam allowance to go together. All right, and that just makes it less bulky uh, overall. So now I can pin this all together. So I'm going to try to lay this out so that it's kind of not taking up too much weight. And this is definitely one where I'm actually going to pin every few inches and then I might have to go back and sort of ease it in different places because I can't get this all laid out perfectly flat. So I'm just gonna try to take the two edges and put them together. All right. So you can see I'm taking big hunks in between. Then I can get to here and I can see like, oh, okay, I think I'm doing all right. It's not too far off. And then I can go back and go in between. So this is um, a place where you can uh, double pin as well. And I'm gonna get these just um, basically together 
and then we can kind of go back and do some double pinning because those two sides are going to want to work themselves apart. I'm going to I'm going to pin it with the uh, the double row, okay? But I just want to get it sort of settled into a spot before I do that. Because if I go and do all of those pins and then I realize it's not actually even, I'll be really sad. Kind of like I was with the side seam. And I was like, oh, well, that didn't work. Okay, let me try again. And right here, that's not such an easy fix. It's nothing I can just trim off. All right. And that seemed to work. I didn't stretch anything too much at all. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this out just a little bit at a time. So I've got this part and I know that it is even. So I can take this and I can turn it and pin it. And this is the stretchy side again. So you remember, this is the crosswise, the, the widthwise grain. So this is the part that's going to stretch. I don't want to stretch it because every time when it starts to get stretched and then it gets pulled back because it's a knit, it'll start to curl more. And the less I can curl it, the better. And I know I've shown that before. I might show you guys with another hunk of fabric if I can remember. Um, but it's important not to stretch because it does curl the fabric. We're trying not to do that. All right. I'm just going to try to get these even. And then I'll come back and do a double row. And because we're working with the two different fabrics, they do want to work, um, I don't know, not as nicely together as I want them to. Sorry, there's a little bit of rearranging that has to happen here. Okay, so I'm going to make sure those are even again. And work my way around. All right. So this would be a place that if you wanted to, you could use the Wonder Clips. These are the places that um, I just feel like I always, always, always use a double, double pinning just to keep it a little bit more where I want it to be. Then I'm also going to use my stiletto to help it work itself around because it's going to want to move on me for sure. Because you can see how much after I pinned it, you can see how much that moves down. Okay, so if you're pinning, don't just think that it stayed where you wanted it to. They'll definitely like to say that Cuddle has a mind of its own, and it really does. So we got to make sure that it's where we want it to be and that it is staying there. So that's what these pins are extra good for, is they are nice and strong. So we've talked about pins before, but I'll reiterate because these two are right next to each other. So these two sort of look the same from this side here. This one is actually a medium weight pin, and this is a heavyweight pin. I, I can tell because this one is the same on both sides and this one is not. Okay, this one is stronger and I felt it when I put it in. It's a just a thicker, stronger needle or pin and uh, they are really good pins. I like them a lot. They're the ones that I definitely recommend. They are, I'm gonna show you really quick. They're the ones that come in this box. Okay, so if you're looking for pins, those are the ones that I recommend. They work really, really well, especially if you're gonna do uh, anything with multiple layers of cuddle. So if you are going to do like a strip quilt, where sometimes you'll end up getting four layers of cuddle together, those pins will make a huge difference in how well it works. And for me, I know um, just using the right tools makes a big, big difference in how well it works and how, how much less you have to fight it. Nobody wants to fight their fabric that much. Okay, almost there. So many pins. I always tell people, pin as much as you think and then pin more. That's kind of what I do. That's my, my way of making it work. It's lots of pins. All right. We are just about back around. Okay. I'm going to be a couple short and that's all right. Okay. You ready to come back? We'll do it again. Yes, okay. All right. And I am working on my, um, it's a baby lock crescendo. And uh, it has, I saw somebody had asked about the walking foot and the walking foot on it is a funky little thing that is actually called a digital dual feed. And it has a little, um, what do we call that? A band? A tread. <laughs> yeah, but like, what is that? Conveyor belt? 
like it's a belt. It's a belt that's on there. And instead of the actual like the little cloth sort of things that are on the bottom of a walking foot. So it works a little bit differently. It works really, really well with cuddle. And I really like it a lot. So that's what we're working with today. So again, we're going to do a half inch seam allowance here. Use the 3.5 stitch length, straight stitch. You could add a little bit and actually, let's add a little bit of zigzag to this. Um, the zigzag will give it a little bit of strength. Okay, so I'm um, so I'm gonna make this not the zigzag I told you about, Michael. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna make this. Oh, I don't want it that wide. Sorry, it's changing the wrong thing. Um, so I'm gonna do 1.5 wide. I'm gonna do it three and a half long. So we're gonna do the same stitch length long, but I'm gonna make it a little bit wider. So it'll give it, the zigzag gives it a little bit of oomph that it can um, stretch a little bit. And because this part is gonna get more of the wear and tear on it. So this is the part that comes up over you that you'll be yanking on and we'll get it more stretch. We'll give it a little bit of extra by, uh, by doing that zigzag up there. All right. So it's just a little zigzag, it's not super wide. And you could probably do narrower if you wanted to. It's up to you. Give it a shot. If you had that thread that we used a couple weeks ago, that Seraflex, I believe it was called, that has stretch in it and would probably work really well for this project as well. Okay, I'm gonna grab my stiletto because I have a feeling I'm gonna need it. Okay, because I wanna keep these fabrics together without them getting, um, moving too much on me. Okay, so I can just hold these. So this is the nice thing about this stiletto is you, you can see it kind of go, it'll go through the fabric and I can actually grab the fabric underneath it and keep it where I want it to be without it tearing the fabric at all. You can also use it to sort of push it down as it goes underneath the foot. So if I start to get the little, um, the little humps, then I can actually just push it down. So I'm just kind of working this around so that it will feed through the machine a little bit nicer. Okay, and then I'm just gonna stitch it all the way around. So this is the part that I was like, oh, if you really forgot, you could actually leave a turning gap on this side, but then you'd have to hand sew it around here and it would be more visible. So now we'll have it so it'll be hidden away. That's even better. So if these sides get a little bit off, don't panic. It's okay, I promise. It'll all even out in the end. Take these pins out so I don't over sew them. So if you have a walking foot on your machine and not this, um, the digital dual feed, it's gonna work the exact same way. I just use the edge of my walking foot as the guide for a half inch seam allowance. So I can keep that going. So you can see it wants to kind of curl out and the fabrics will do that. They'll behave a little differently. So I just try to make sure that they are as even as possible and not stretching. Okay, but if they are not perfectly even, it is okay. All right, so as we come around here, this is, remember, this is where my fold matches with my seam allowance. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin in that so that it will stay flat. So as I sew, I don't get the extra bulk of the seam allowance, it'll just kind of go flat in there. All right, work our way. Look, I see the end. It's there. Okay, we'll just work our way, come back all the way across where we stitched before. The stitch past it just a little and then back stitch. I found that if I go past it, it kind of makes that um, closure a little bit better. All right, so now I've got it stitched all the way around. We've got the two pieces. Now this is where it gets a little funky and it took me a little bit to figure out what the heck I was doing at this part. So uh, hopefully this is crystal clear to you. So if I took this, I could take this and turn it inside out and put them inside of each other and then top stitch it, right? And then it would be a bag and it totally would work. But the thing is, is that then you're, the bottoms of the two bags are loose from each other. So what we wanna do here is attach those bottoms together so that it just stays one solid bag the entire time and your inside can't come back out because that's really, um, 
that was that it just would be really frustrating if every time like you pulled your feet out and your socks stuck to the lux cuddle and it pulled it inside you'd have to shove it back in sounds like a pain in the rear to me so this is a nifty little trick where we're actually going to stitch the bottoms together and then turn it inside out okay all right so now here's my here's my little turning gap that i did okay so this is still waiting for me i'm going to make sure that my fold continues down that side and I don't accidentally twist it here. Okay, this reminds me of like when I have done linings on a jacket, I have twisted the sleeve. We don't want that to happen. Okay, so make sure that at the bottom that your fold is matching your seam allowance as well. Okay, so that's really important that these two are going to go together. So we have a seam allowance and I have my fold and I'm going to pin those in place here. All right, so now I can manage to, to move all of this and I'm gonna get these ends to match. So now I've got these and they're gonna come over here. So this is my seam allowance. I'm gonna make sure that it goes over a little bit so that these match. So the bottom like smooth parts are matching. So I've got a seam allowance hanging off over here and I've got a seam allowance hanging off over here. Okay, so that the bottom edges are even. I hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, so now I'm just gonna pin these together. They both have a one inch seam allowance. Okay, and I'm gonna stab through all four layers of the fabric. You could use um, clips here too, if you wanted to. Um, I'm gonna use the pins, because I like them. I'm gonna make sure that this stays nice and even as I work my way across. Okay, and that basically my seam allowances are in the same spot. So they may not be exactly the same. I'm not being that careful with it, but I am just sort of measuring the edge. I use the same way of measuring the one inch seam allowance for both of them. So it should be pretty darn even. Uh, somebody has a good idea for a multi-use. If you wanted mm -hmm. to adjust the pattern and put a drawstring in the top, you could use it as a, as a carrying device for all of your stuffies. That is totally true, especially if you did the small size, that'd be great. We joked about um, that you could totally do this and then just put suspenders on it and then you could just wear it all the time, um, <laughs> which I kind of, am, you know, I'm open to that idea too. Sacks, so. fabrics <laughs> is not good for the sewing studio. Probably not, <laughs> probably Wet not. Wet <laughs> Don't do it, Teresa. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back over and I'm just going to zigzag the bottom of that. So I'm adhering the two seam allowances together, the two bottoms, so that when we turn it inside out, the bottom stays in the bottom, okay? So now I'm gonna stick it on my five wide, five long zigzag. And um, we're gonna zigzag across the bottom, okay. So I'm gonna stick this in here and I am doing it in the seam allowance. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stitch just a little bit in the back stitch so I can catch it. You could do a lock stitch here as well. And then I'm just gonna stitch all the way across. Okay, make sure that's nice and flat. You can see the reason I love this digital dual feed is it just kind of <laughs> Just blows through all of this, okay? So I can kind of just swish it down a little bit as I'm going through. It's a lot of layers, but it works just fine. And because it's just a zigzag stitch, it's not too um, not too difficult at all. So I wanna make sure I'm not catching anything on the back. So I kind of just keep a finger over here, make sure that it's the same thickness as I go. Okay, make sure that it's all pulled up. It's easy for things to get moved out of the way if I'm not careful, so. Do a little back stitch. Bink. All right, so now we have this funky thing, which seems really weird and not quite right, but if I did it right <laughs> the second time, <laughs> then it will totally work. Okay, so now we're just gonna start pulling some out. I want to see how this works. Okay, so I'm just turning it through that gap there and it's working just fine. Even though I made it smaller, it wasn't too small like I, I sometimes do. <laughs> no broken stitches. 
I haven't heard any stitches pop yet. <laughs> yep. So, <laughs> especially not with, the, not with those uh, the L brackets. Right. Yeah, it definitely won't that do that there. Yeah. Exactly, the L brackets down at the bottom make it a big, big difference. Okay, so now I've pulled the whole thing. Here are my corners. I can feel, so you could sort of, you could sort of see it's uh, extra thick right here, and that's because that's all of my seam allowances are down here. Okay, this you can also see that it's stuck in those seams, and I can totally just come along here with my little stiletto, and I can poke all of that up. Okay, so now that bottom seam allowance won't look quite so funky. I can also kind of come in here and I can use the little stabby bits, stab through all of the fabric and bring it up. Nice. Okay, so then I can just do that. The key with um, using the point of it to kind of pull the fabric up like that at the corner is to stick it uh, the, the point in a, like far. So don't, and we'll do it on this corner too, and I'll show you. So if I just grab the top of it, I'm more likely to catch it and kind of pull the fabric and maybe tear it. So what I do is I stick it way in there and then I push it. So it's basically the, almost the whole needle, like not needle, but the whole end of it gets stuck in there so that I can get it nice and, nice and deep into the fabric and pull it up. So I'm not putting too much stress on just one area, okay? So this I've got probably half an inch or so that's tucked in there that I can pull that up and get that corner nice and even. Okay. The other thing I can do is stick my arm all the way down there, but I don't particularly want to right now. Okay. So now I'm going to pick this thing up and let it sort of drop together. Okay. So this is how it is. Here is my turning gap. And we're going to sew that shut. So you can see, so it's right now it's inside out. Okay. So this is the uh, uh, inside is what I can see. So what the way that I've got it now is inside out. I want to sew my turning gap shut and then we'll zigzag the top. Okay. So I just saw it. Where did it go? There it is. Okay. So one of the great things about doing uh, the little L brackets in here and this being on the inside is this will sort of just smash shut. Okay, so if you want to, you could totally just take this to the machine and just zigzag it and nobody's ever going to be the wiser. I'm going to hand stitch it because I feel like I should. I'll be a good example. Um, I think Linda probably <laughs> probably just zigzags hers. We always chat about how much she does not like hand stitching and I don't mind it too much. So I'm going to hand stitch this closed. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a big... Uh, Kind of a ladder stitch here not super careful you could do a ladder stitch or a whip stitch and we're just going to bring this along and i'm basically just trying to catch inside the fold on either side so that it'll come together and then i can just give it a little tug make sure it's nice and even caught this shouldn't get too much stretch or too much stress on the seam right here where it's at um because it's, it's on the side. I shouldn't catch it with my foot or anything as I'm going in. But if I were doing it for a little, I'd want to make sure that it was uh, nice and secure because I feel like they're probably not going to be quite as careful as I would be. All right. Okay. So we're just doing big stitches. You can see that my stitches are probably, I don't know, a quarter of an inch or more and three eighths. And so nice and big stitches makes it just really easy to do. I feel like the ladder stitch is a little bit more secure. But if you like a whip stitch, you go ahead and do that. It is okay. All right. All right. A couple more stitches and then we'll be done. So for me, the um, the thing with the turning gap is I'm always like, I want to leave it small so I don't have to stitch as much. This one was pretty good. I left it at probably about seven inches, I think. And it worked out just fine. You don't want to make it too small, though, because that turning out part, you are turning a lot of fabric. I mean, three yards is what just came through there. So it is a lot of fabric. So I'm going to give that a nice little tug. Pull that up. You can't even see that there is a seam there. Even though that was probably the lousiest ladder stitch you've ever watched. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do a little knot. And I'll do another little knot. Bring it through there. Pull it nice and tight. And then I always... Stab it back into the fabric and bring it out elsewhere so that the remainder of the stitches or remainder of the thread is inside of the fabric. Okay, then I can't accidentally cut my knot. 
All right, so there we go. All stitched up. Can't even tell where it's at. That's so great. Look at that. Okay, so now we've got it so that this, the inside, the outside, they're solid. Now we just need to top stitch the top of it. Put the suspenders on. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> okay, we'll turn it inside out. I'll do the same thing to kind of drop it. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here at my corners and pull those. So now, up this way. Okay, so there's we were one talking corner. About the, you, can, you can use this cuddle sack while you're sewing. Oh, like yeah. There's, a, there's enough room yeah. in the bottom for your feet to move around and for you to be able to access the, the pedal. Linda says she does. Yeah. And I, awesome. I mean, it's great for all sorts of things. And we spend so much time sitting in front of the computer these days or just watching TV or whatever. Like, this is great. And especially if you're in a place where it's um, extra cold, I think it'll be lovely here, too. Um, so I'm looking forward to napping later this afternoon. And... Uh, Give it a try, see what happens. Okay, so now I've got my top. So at this point, this wants to kind of, you know, do this thing where it doesn't really stay together at the top because that's what it'll do. So we're going to stitch these together. So again, I'm going to pin all the way around it. Okay, and I'm then I'm gonna top stitch. I'm gonna top stitch with a serpentine, but you can totally do a zigzag too. All right. I'm actually, I'm gonna do a combo of things because this is already stitched once. So it's not gonna stretch so much. Um, and so I'm actually going to, even though it's on the stretchy side, the stitching here and you can see the zigzag gives it a little bit of extra ability to stretch here, okay? If I'd use just a straight stitch with cotton, this would totally pop, but because it's zigzag and polyester, it has the extra strength, okay? But I'm gonna clip around this top and then I'm gonna pin below and do my stitches there. So you could do a double pinning uh, further apart. The way we, uh, the pattern is written is that you pin it a half an inch and then I think at one and a half inches. I'm just going to clip along the top and then pin below. But either way works. Um, whatever works for you is what we want to, what we're trying to do is to get this secured so these stay together and kind of will hold the seam allowance in there. So I'm just going to kind of work my way. I found the uh, there's a seam allowance there. Gonna pull it out, fluff it up, and then I'm just going to keep wonder clipping all the way around. Okay, so this is like it's just, you know, one size fits all. It ends up being a, oh, I don't know, 30 plus 30 plus minus the seam allowances, really like 54, 57 inch around. Um, super nice, big, easy to get into. Um, little bag to get into. I love the idea of like just being able to like snuggle into this. Seriously. When I was growing up, I slept in a sleeping bag the entire, <laughs> the entire time on my bed. I had a sleeping bag and that, and then I would hide inside of it and with the flashlight and read books in the middle of the night. And this project makes me think of my childhood. I'm really excited. I want so, so basically what I'm hearing is that I'm going to find you in the cuddle sack. Most of the time. With, with a book okay. and a flashlight. So I might have to make my own. Uh, All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just seems super comfy. I love this idea. So I'm very excited about it. I did try the uh, the miniature size, but my legs are bigger than that. So I could get it up, you know, to my thigh. And that was it. So I've clipped it. So I've clipped it here. And then I'm going to pin in between the same way we like just basically double pin. Make sure that this is nice and flat work my way around. All right. So I'm going to stick that other pin in so that it keeps the two layers together where I want it to be. And then we'll work around it. All right. Because what we want to do is get these all nice and even. Sorry, I have to keep moving it. It's just going to happen. Okay. I don't want it to, to get too out of whack. If it does, it's not a huge deal. Nothing really happens. Your top just isn't even. But honestly, it's so cute. It's so easy. And the, uh, the like, what do we call it? The versatility of it is just immense. Like, you can make it with so many different kinds of fabrics. And we have so many different prints. You can make it with the cuddle, the digital prints, which is what this is, or the shark was with the traditional print. So both of them work really well. And we have so many different, like, um, feminine styles and, like, 
little, um, just very generic, you know, gender neutral styles, very, um, just a huge variety of stuff. So I really want to see everybody's after this. Um, which reminds me that if you have not joined our group on Facebook, our I Love Cuddle group, I really suggest that you join that. And if you are there or you join it and you make one of these, please post a picture. I love seeing what you guys do uh, after the Sew so so Together Tuesdays and see what you guys do with the projects. It's super fun because honestly, if I had the time, I would sit here for a week and make all the variations because I'd be like, oh my gosh, and you could do it out of this. You could do it out of this. And what about that? I mean, that's the way my brain works. So that's what I would want to do. Um, so I'm relying on you to make all those samples for me and show me how cute they are because that's really what I want to see is how cute they are in all the fabrics. Okay, so I Love Cuddle, it's on our face, it's on Facebook, it's our group, and we have just a group of people who are cuddle fanatics. So we love sewing with cuddle, so all sorts of different things, and uh, it's great for inspiration and be able to have questions and share things and all of that good stuff. So I hope you'll join us there. All right. One more time around, and now we're gonna do the serpentine. Okay, so I'm gonna switch mine over to the serpentine stitch, which is gonna be this little S-shaped one. So it's the serpentine stitch, and I'm gonna change it so that it is three wide, and it is two long. So what I want is a nice swooping serpentine as I go around, and not so much the really like sometimes it's like this sort of an s and i want it to be like brrr, okay so that's what i that's what i switched around there so i'm doing it in black it'll show a little bit and i'm gonna try i can find the side there it is i'm gonna start at the side seam also this is a fun repeat it doesn't perfectly match but look at how how very close that is this is the side seam so good i'm so happy with it <laughs> that just Lucky. happened. It was luck of the draw. That just happened to be where it turned out. So I'm going to take my little wonder clip out of there so it doesn't uh, get in the way. Okay, I'm going to start here. We're going to work our way around. So I'm not marking the edge because if I put my post-it on here, this is the time that this will just sort of like push it off. I won't be able to see it as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep an eye on this little edge and try to keep it so that it's poking out the side there. Okay, I'm going to do a little lock stitch because that works better than a back stitch with this one. And I'm just going to work my way around it all the way around. Okay, and if I'm lucky and I pinned it correctly, I shouldn't have to take out too many of the pins. I would say none, except that I knew that one was coming and that one was way too close. But if you pin it carefully, you won't have to take out the pins as you're sewing. You'll just take them out when you're done. And I'm just gonna go all the way around. So you could do a zigzag with this if you preferred. You could uh, do any sort of stretch that had a, or any sort of stitch that had a little stretch. I think the serpentine and zigzag are probably the easiest. So if you don't have a serpentine stitch on your, on your machine, a zigzag would work just as well. You could do it uh, like a long, very uh, narrow zigzag or do a wider one if you wanted. And if you were doing this for a little, who's going to really stress on it a lot, I would probably stitch, top stitch twice around it just to make sure. Cause they're going to pull and tug and, it's a knit, it's gonna stretch. So we just try to put it. If you have two ills, they're gonna fight over it. Yes, you gotta make two. Yeah. Apparently, tug, like we do. Tug, tug of war. Yes. Yeah, and then you're in trouble. We don't want that. So yeah. So if you got littles, you better make two. Whoa, that was close. All right. And honestly, like I said, the pattern is available with all of these different sizes in it. So it goes from, I think, one yard up to two yards for each fabric. You can do all sorts of different things with it. And um, yeah, super flexible. Versatile, super versatile. Get the right word. All right. We are almost back around. Let's see how that's, I never even did check how that's looking. But that's looking pretty good. I like that stitch on it. Okay. And the the reason we want to do a serpentine or the zigzag is just because it will have a little bit more stretch. This is going to be a place where it's going to get more stress on the seam. And so we want to give it a, a stitch that will, yeah, just not as likely to, to pop. 
that said, this would be an easy one to fix if it does. And those little monkeys are so cute. Look at this one. It's just like, hello. Hello. Oh, right now it's being. Clean. Yeah, sorry, guy. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now I'm going to back to the beginning. I'm going to do a little lock stitch, and then I will take my thing out, and then I'll take out all my pins. Okay, so I want to make sure this is another place. Take out all of those pins. Get them all out. All right. Okay, did we see more? Yep, thanks. <laughs> we call you Hawkeye now. It was a good I, eye. He, he was good one eye. of my heroes. <laughs> uh, <I pierced. laughs> so thanks for having the good eye there to catch that, that pin. We want to make sure that they're all out. So at this point, we've got, so you can move over here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how this works. So this is all top stitched. Okay, okay. So this is all top stitched, and I'm just going to <laughs> step right in. Step right in, okay? Here we go. Pink. Oh, oh my goodness. It's lovely. Look at that. So now I don't have, I don't have a stool in here. Otherwise like pink, I could sit down. Um, oh, gone. yeah, the stool is gone, but this works great for being able to sit at a chair. It's perfect. It's actually like a great, what was that? Push, your, push this, push the thing with your foot. Oh, let's see if I can do it. Oh, look. Oh, I have to stand right. Okay. Here we go. Bink, 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 bink. Like I can totally sew with it. You guys totally like, but this is when I need the suspenders, right? So I could sit, <laughs> and then I would, I would have to hop down the stairs, and that would be a terrible idea. So maybe I could just, you know, take it off when I do that. But this is how this works. So this is a good way of um, figuring out how which length that you want to use. Okay, because this is the, um, this was the one and a half yards. <laughs> okay, so this is one and a half yards. I am five, six, and a little bit, and this is how high it comes up on me. Okay, so this is long enough and that's sort of how it was, how I think she figured it out is this is long enough that I could sit down on it and it wouldn't slide underneath me. So that's really what you want is enough that you could come around. All right, so come around front again. I'll come out of my cuddle sack, fine, fine, but it's so warm. Um, so that's how that works, okay? <laughs> Super duper easy, great project to use. Like we said, incredibly versatile. We were looking around yesterday and I was looking at different fabrics that I wanted to use for, um, like to show for a sample. And there are so many that are so great. Actually, I want to show you one really quick that I almost brought out yesterday and then I didn't because this is a new one that I really love. Just check this one out with these. Like, wouldn't this be beautiful? Like seriously, either of these fabrics, like honestly, there's so many. So you can just go to the website and look around and figure out combos that you love and then order those because they're beautiful. There's so many. Oh, sorry. Um, there are so many different choices. And really what I was saying is it's incredibly um, tailorable to whoever it is that you wanna give it to. So if you are interested in giving it to a nurse, this is a great one. If you wanna give it to someone that you love, there you go. Happy Valentine talk. Um, so now he has his own little cuddle sack. Um, if you want to give it to somebody who is really into space, we have some space themed stuff. We have like all sorts of stuff. Um, so you could do anything that you want. I love the versatility of it. It's super great. Okay, so there we go. Sorry, I had to show you another combo because I just loved it. I was like, sorry. Sorry, Michael, I didn't tell you that fabric. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's just so many choices I want. All right, so let me come back over here. Hold on half a second. I can find, make my computer work the way I want it to so I can come over and see uh, what we're saying. Um, Somebody, oh, somebody asked, so a couple of questions to follow up on. So somebody asked, will it be easier to put the fabric through the machine with the Lux cuddle on the bottom or the thinner print cuddle on the bottom near the feed dogs? It really depends on your machine. I feel like sometimes it works better if the print is on the bottom and I use my stiletto to feed the Lux cuddle in on top. Sometimes it works the opposite. So I would just see which one works best for you. Um, part of it is using that stiletto like I was showing you to kind of flatten it and push it underneath the foot because what happens is it kind of will want to hump if they're two different fabrics. So you just sort of kind of feed it underneath. You ha usually have pretty good luck. It really kind of depends on the machine because um, sometimes I've had better luck the other way too. So give it a both um, a, sh a shot. What are the dimensions of the finished size? It would be about... 
28 across and a yard and a half is what? 36, is that 48? So like 46 um, inches tall. Uh, we can figure out the finish size, but it's about that. So basically you're losing an inch and a half on the length and uh, an inch on the width. Okay, so um, 28 inches by... 54 inches minus the seam allowances. Okay, so... 52-ish. Yeah, so around there. Ish. Uh, ish. <laughs> uh, also, can you show the top part of the bag when Teresa finishes sewing? I often forget to do this. I showed you just a little bit. So this is how it finishes. Thanks for the reminder. Okay, so really nice little... Uh, the serpentine on there looks great. Brings the fabric, so we'll show you from the inside. The serpentine just kind of hides in there. Can't really see it at all. Okay. You could come along here with the stiletto and totally, uh, totally uh, pick that out if you wanted to. Okay. Super duper cute. You could do two rows there if you wanted to. Whatever. All sorts of choices. All right. So that is the soft and cozy cuddle sack. Thank you for joining me for Sew Together Tuesday. I'm so glad you came. Uh, if this is your first time here, please give us an extra thumbs up. I'd love to see um, how many of you are new. It's so fun because every week we get more and more people and it's awesome. I love being able to share my, uh, my love for cuddle with you guys. So, you um, that's what I was just getting to. So <laughs> Sorry, I rushed you. don't rush me. I got it. Um, today, today I've got it. Cause I'm <laughs> not always, I'm very forgetful. Um, so our winner for today is Shelly A. Congratulations. Congratulations, Shelly. You are the winner and we will send you a strip quilt. A cuddle strip quilt. So if you will message us so you can get a hold of us through our Facebook page here. So just go up to the message part of it and message us privately. And then we will get a hold of you. You can send us your address and all of that good stuff and we will send you a kit. So then you can um, make your very own cuddle strip quilt. If you uh, need to get more fabric, you know, Head out there, go find some, buy a couple of yards of two different matching fabrics, make yourself a good cuddle sack, or, you know, make them for the whole fam. That sounds great, too. So um, either way, you're going to have a lot of fun. These are, um, it's just a super great project. So thanks, Linda. I appreciate it. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go snuggle up and take a nap. Okay. We'll be back next week for Sew Together Tuesday, next Tuesday, every week, 10 a.m. And uh, until then, happy sewing.